Today we will be discussing food protection practices. This webinar will count as the annual training as required by the Department of Health. As of October 1, 2018, new regulations have been implemented by the Department of Health. Part of these new regulations require an annual training for all food service employees. Any employee hired after the annual training has been provided must receive training within 30 days of being hired. All newly hired cafeteria substitute employees will receive the training during their new employee orientation. The signed roster from the NEO will be sent to the manager. The manager must then file the roster with other professional development rosters. The signed training rosters and the curriculum must be maintained for three years by the manager and must be made available upon request by the Department of Health. It is very important to be able to have the training information and rosters readily available for the health inspector if requested. The changes to the new regulations that the health inspectors will be reviewing when they visit your site include the temperature for holding hot food, which has changed from 140 degrees to 135 degrees. They will be monitoring time and temperature control for safety of potentially hazardous foods. They will be observing employee health and hygiene. They will be confirming employee training has been provided by reviewing the curriculum and rosters as stated previously. And they will ensure that a procedure is in place for employees to follow when responding to vomiting or diarrheal events. The new changes being implemented by the Department of Health come from this document, which is Florida Administrative Code 64E-11, titled Food Hygiene. What you are seeing here is page one of the 14-page document. The new health inspection report is now called the Food Establishment Inspection Report, which some or most of you may already be familiar with. The main sections are foodborne illness risk factors and public health interventions, which includes compliance criteria numbers 1 through 29 and the good retail practices section, which includes compliance criteria numbers 30 through 57. Page two of the new inspection report includes temperature observations where the health inspector will check and record temperatures of food on the serving line, food in warmers, food in refrigerators and freezers, food in thermal transport containers and on the carts used for outside lines. Additionally, they will also check temperatures of equipment such as refrigerators, freezers, beverage coolers, warmers and pass-throughs. They will also check hot water temperatures at all locations. The last section includes observations and corrective actions for the violations cited in the report. A satisfactory report must have no more than three violations marked in the risk factors and interventions section, which are considered critical violations. No more than four violations may be marked under the good retail practices section, and there may be no more than two repeat violations from previous visits. Each section is individually rated, therefore you may still receive a satisfactory report as long as you don't exceed the maximum allowed violations in any section. An unsatisfactory report will be given if four or more violations are marked in the risk factors and intervention section, five or more violations are marked in the good retail practices section, or three or more repeat violations are cited. If you exceed the maximum allowed violation in any one section, your site will receive an unsatisfactory report. Thermometers must be calibrated regularly at least once a week. If the thermometer is dropped, used an extreme temperature, or you are not sure of its accuracy, you must calibrate the thermometer. Refer to Food and Nutrition Procedure H6 for calibrating thermometers. All prepared foods must be marked with the date the food is prepared. This includes the food that is panned and placed on racks for the next day's meal service. Items that are removed from their original package must be marked with the receipt date or the expiration date depending on the item. 
for example a bag of pasta out of the case or bread not in the original packaging. Although not as typical as the previous violations mentioned, carbon monoxide fumes can create hazardous conditions and is considered a violation. To prevent carbon monoxide poisoning, you must ensure your hood system is working and turned on at all times while cooking. Also, make sure delivery drivers turn off their vehicles while unloading. Monitoring of employee health is another new requirement. To prevent the spread of foodborne illness, this new change requires food service managers to monitor their employees' health. It also requires managers and employees to report the illnesses listed on the right to the Department of Health. That is why it is important that all food service employees follow proper hand washing techniques and use clean gloves when handling food. The new health code is based on risk factors that can cause foodborne illness. The good news is that much of the foodborne illness is preventable with the appropriate focus on controlling the risk factors. These are improper holding temperatures, inadequate cooking, contaminated equipment, food from unsafe sources, poor personal hygiene. Here are different ways that food handlers can contaminate food. Scratching of the scalp, running fingers through your hair, wiping or touching the nose, rubbing an ear, touching a pimple or infected wound, wearing a dirty uniform, coughing or sneezing into the hand, spitting in the operation. Food and Nutrition Procedure H1 Personal hygiene requires food service staff to adhere to the following. Report to work in good health, good personal hygiene and dressed in clean and appropriate uniform. Change apron when it becomes soiled. Proper hair restraints are required and must cover the entire head to prevent hair from falling into food or onto food contact surfaces. Hair net or other approved hair covering must be worn at all times. Beards and mustaches must be neatly trimmed. A beard restraint is required when in food preparation or serving areas. Wash hands properly, frequently, and at the appropriate times. Refer to Food and Nutrition Procedure H2. Keep fingernails trimmed, filed and maintained so that the edges can be easily cleaned and not rough. Artificial nails, decorations, decals, jewels, etc. and fingernail polish are not permitted. Wear single-use gloves when preparing and serving food and change gloves frequently. Do not wear any jewelry except for a plain ring, plain earrings, and a watch. No bracelets or necklaces are permitted. Treat and bandage wounds and sores immediately. When hands have open wounds, scabs, or are bandaged, disposable gloves must be worn at all times and changed frequently. Employees are not permitted to eat, drink, or chew gum in the food service area. As stated in Food and Nutrition Procedure H1, Personal Hygiene, fingernails must be short and clean without polish. False nails are not permitted, nor is any type of coating such as gel. Food handlers must wash their hands before they start work and after they use the restroom after handling raw meat, poultry, and seafood, touching the hair, face, or body, sneezing, coughing, or using a tissue, eating, drinking, smoking, or chewing gum or tobacco, and handling chemicals that might affect food safety. Hand washing should take at least 20 seconds. Be sure to use running water as hot as you can comfortably stand it should be at least 100 degrees. Apply soap, enough to build up a good lather. Scrub hands and arms vigorously for at least 10 to 15 seconds. Be sure to clean under fingernails and between fingers. Rinse hands and arms thoroughly using running warm water. Dry hands and arms using single-use paper towel or hand dryer. Consider using a paper towel to turn off the faucet and open the restroom door.
The Department of Food and Nutrition HACCP procedures can be found in the online procedure manual at nutrition.dateschools.net under H1 through H21. Here you will see the HACCP food safety checklist which is readily available in the HACCP attachments in the online procedure manual, in the documents and forms section of the website, and in the manager's book bag under school operations. This checklist must be completed weekly throughout the week. One to two sections should be completed daily starting on Monday or as items require corrective action and should be completed by Friday. Food storage must be organized to facilitate using food in the order that it was received, FIFO or first in first out. Anytime a refrigerated or freezer unit is not at proper temperature, all items must be removed and a sign stating do not use must be placed on the unit. Always ensure that all food items in inventory are marked with the receipt date and that the expiration date is circled. Food items in inventory must be checked daily to ensure that all products are fresh and in good condition. Be sure to pay close attention to the expiration or best if used by dates. FIFO must be used to rotate stock properly and any items with an expired date must always immediately be discarded. The following dates are important to food service operations. The delivery date is the date the product was brought to your school by the vendor. Each item must contain the month, date, and year. The manufacturer or pack date is the date the product was made at the factory and it appears on most items. The Julian calendar date is also a manufacture date that appears on some cases, such as juice. An example as shown here is 18017, which means the product was produced on the 17th day of 2018. The best if used by date is the latest date the product can be served and appears on most cases or packages. Items must be discarded if it is past that date. The expiration date is the date the product is unacceptable to serve and must be discarded. The thaw date is the date when frozen product is placed in the refrigerator. Last but not least, the cooked or prepared date is the date written on leftovers indicating when that menu item was made or when items are prepared for the next day's service. HACCP Procedures H16 covers receiving and storage of food. You must always reject and return all food products that do not meet quality and safe temperature standards. Organize your freezers and refrigeration space, loading docks and storerooms before deliveries using first in and first out principles. Do not touch ready to eat foods with bare hands. Inspect products for quality correct temperature damage, spoilage and festation, disfigured and or discolored cases or cans, expiration dates where specified. Mark the delivery date, month, day, and year, or the pack date on the food containers, and you must always record pack date of commodities on delivery invoice. Be sure to circle the expiration date of food items as applicable. HACCP Procedure H7 covers thawing of foods. Food products must be thawed by one of the following methods. The preferred method is to thaw foods in the refrigerator at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Never thaw foods at room temperature. Thaw foods needed for immediate service under potable running water at 70 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Be sure to prepare this product within four hours of thawing. Another method is to thaw foods in a microwave oven only if product is being cooked immediately. You may also thaw foods as part of a conventional cooking process. Be sure to use the lowest shelf in the cooler for thawing raw meat to prevent cross-contamination and separate raw products from cooked and ready-to-eat products. Do not refreeze thawed foods unless they are first cooked or processed. Always label food products with calendar date of removal from freezer. Under HACCP procedures, the only way to reduce pathogens in food to safe levels is to cook it to its minimum internal temperature according to the recipe. 
This temperature is different for each food. To make sure the food you are cooking has reached the proper temperature, you must know how to take temperatures correctly. Be sure to prepare foods as close to serving time as the menu will allow, and always prepare food in small batches, which in our department we refer to as batch cooking. Under HACCP procedure H10, hot foods must be held at 135 degrees Fahrenheit or above. You must hold cold foods at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below, and always preheat steam tables and heated cabinets. HACCP procedure H8 covers proper cooling of foods. When cooked food will not be served right away, it must be cooled as quickly as possible. To prevent microbial growth, you may reduce the quantity of the food being cooled by cutting large food items into smaller pieces or divide large containers of food into smaller containers. Use ice water baths, divide cooked food into shallow pans or smaller pots, then place pans or pots in ice water, stir food items frequently. Always stir foods to cool them faster and more evenly. The one stage or four hour method is the acceptable process for cooling food. Cool hot cooked food from 135 degrees to 41 degrees Fahrenheit within four hours. Be sure to take temperatures at 4 hours to make sure that the appropriate temperature was reached. If food has not cooled to 41 degrees Fahrenheit in 4 hours, reheat food to above 165 degrees. HACCP Procedures H4 covers sanitizing equipment, utensils, and facilities. Always clean and sanitize sinks and work surfaces that will be used for sanitizing smallwares. Scrape and rinse food into garbage and pre-soak items. Wash, rinse and sanitize pots, pans, utensils, etc. with approved chemicals. Clean and sanitize large equipment. Always clean and sanitize food and non-food contact surfaces prior to use. Although the hood system is cleaned by an outside contractor, it must be maintained by our staff. Be sure to remove all debris, dust, and other particles from hood on a weekly basis. Maintain your kitchen clean at all times. This poster outlines the proper procedure for cleanup and disinfection for norovirus. The first step is to remove the vomit or diarrhea immediately using protective gloves. Wash area with soapy water, rinse the area thoroughly, and wipe it dry with paper towels. The second step requires disinfecting the area with a chlorine bleach solution. Third, you must wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. These are pictures of how dry storage areas and walk-in refrigerators and freezers should look. Labels and dates are facing forward. An organized area helps to ensure that product is maintained at optimal freshness. Kitchen equipment should always be kept clean and in good working order. Important food tasks to accomplish every morning. Be sure to check for hot water. Check and record temperatures of all refrigerated equipment and storage room. And ensure hot wells and holding cabinets are heating properly. Under the new regulations, food service employees are required to be familiar with the big six pathogens, which are the most contagious and cause the most severe symptoms. As the Department of Health visits sites, they may question employees about these pathogens. E. coli and hepatitis A are two of the big six. E. coli is typically spread by eating contaminated foods such as raw vegetables and fruits, unpasteurized dairy products, or undercooked meats. It can also be contracted from touching the fecal matter of another infected person. Hepatitis A is spread through the fecal oral route either from person to person or through ingesting contaminated food or water. 
non-typhoidal salmonella and norovirus are two more of the big six. Non-typhoidal salmonella is typically caused by eating contaminated food of animal origin such as eggs, meat, poultry, or milk. Raw vegetables may be contaminated if they come into contact with animal feces. Person-to-person -person transmission is also possible through the fecal-oral route. Norovirus is highly contagious. It can be spread from contact with an infected person touching an infected surface or ingesting contaminated food or water. The last two pathogens of the big six are Shigella and Salmonella typhi. Shigella is typically spread from person-to-person -person contact through the fecal-oral route. It is more common in young children. Salmonella typhi is spread from person to person through the fecal oral route as well as drinking infected water. Here are symptoms for the big six pathogens. E. coli symptoms include severe and sometimes bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, and vomiting. Hepatitis A symptoms and severity vary. They include fever, malaise, diarrhea, and jaundice. Non-typhoidal salmonella. Symptoms are typically mild and include acute onset fever, diarrhea, nausea, and occasional vomiting. Norovirus. Symptoms include stomach pain, nausea, and vomiting. Occasionally, fever, muscle pain, or malaise are present. Shigella. Symptoms include fever, stomach cramps, and diarrhea, which is often bloody. Salmonella typhi. Symptoms include sudden fever, headache, nausea. Infected persons may also experience splenic enlargement, constipation, or diarrhea. Prevention of the Big Six Pathogens Many of the Big Six can be prevented by washing hands frequently and taking care to ensure all food has been thoroughly washed, pasteurized, or cooked to the correct temperature. In the food service setting, make sure workers wear gloves when appropriate, avoid cross-contamination, and are excused from food preparation if they have an active infection. The best prevention against hepatitis A is vaccination. All food service managers have received these two posters containing information on the Big Six pathogens. They should be in all cafeterias for easy reference by food service employees. The following is a Department of Health publication on how to handle sick employees. The kitchen facility and the cafeteria area must be free of any pests such as insects and rodents. The food service area must receive integrated pest control management services monthly. If pest issues arise, sites may receive service more frequently. Always be aware of facility issues that may allow pest intrusion and report them to your site administrator. This concludes the Department of Health required annual training for 2018. Thank you for your time.